Dell Boy Army, welcome to another spicy one on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing the ultimate FIFA 22 custom tactics and instructions guide. So I've covered lots of different stuff like this in videos before. Obviously, whenever I do tactics videos, I discuss all this. But I'm kind of trying to put it into one comprehensive video that you guys can see. That's hopefully going to be really helpful for you guys. So custom tactics, they make a big difference. They can change quite drastically how you play. But the first place to start is here, where you build chemistry. Ignore the team at the moment. I've got a load of coins. I'm messing around my team, looking to change it up a bit. Um, so the team's not in place. I'm going to be building on stream today and playing some games. So if you've never tuned into my stream before, Zelonius92, get involved over there. But um, yeah, this is where you build the balance team. So whatever you put in here is the balance, is what plays in the balance formation. I use this for um, literally just for the chemistry because obviously right now it's not 100 chemistry because players are in weird positions. But in the actual game, you don't use this formation. You don't use your balance tactic. It's just to get chemistry at the start. And then in game, you press left or right on the arrows to switch to one of these tactics. So obviously we've got four separate tactics. At the very least, I would say utilize at least three of them. You at least want a tactic you can start in that you can spend most of the game in. The ultra defensive I will always put as my tactic that I see out of game in. My ultra attacking is always going to be the tactic that I go for if I'm losing late on or by a couple of goals, not too long to go, and I want to go all out attack to try and get back into the game. You need a game plan, and the custom tactics is a key way to do that. Very simple, just switch between it using this. Um, not much more to it, really. Let's go through the actual tactics now, though, and I'll discuss what each bit does. So, the defensive style. The defensive style, a lot of this is basically about how aggressively you will press to how deep you want your team to sit. The depth in, and width, not so much the width, but the depth kind of works hand-in-hand hand with the defensive style. But on this game, even if you have high depth, your team still drop back naturally. There was actually a live tuning update today, 20, oh, so 20th, 17th of March, where they talked about making teams not drop back as much. We need to see how that actually plays in the game. I've not played a game on the patch yet, but for this FIFA so far, teams have just not been able to drop back, um, not been able to push up naturally. They can push up to press a bit, but then they naturally just drop back eventually. Um, so I'll be interested to see that. Uh, but yeah, the defensive style, drop backs, obviously they're a negative one. Balanced is a mix. Press on heavy touch kind of puts team press on every so often if, they think, if the computer thinks that they can't stay on bad touch. Press after possession loss and constant pressure. Press after possession loss, basically for seven seconds after um, the opponent's got the ball off you, you go all out to press. And then constant pressure is literally team press, but constant, basically. The whip... Is base. By the way, this tactic is very negative, but this is just my ultra defensive see it out tactic. The width <coughs> is based how compact you want your team to be. In a very defensive see it out formation like five three two, then I'm going to have low width because I've got wing wing backs anyway, and I want lots of players in the middle to occupy that space. But when you're playing against someone who's trying to keep the ball against you and you're out pressed, you need high width to be able to go get push out wide and get the ball off them. Depth, like I say, is how high your team will push up. It's not how deep or high your team sit naturally, which is how it probably should be, but it's not how it is on FIFA. Build-up play. The only one I have in a default tactic pretty much is balanced. Um, I would say that direct passing is really good on the chance creation because it seems to make the team's um, opposite players drop back and go to like six-yard line, so you do one pass and then you're in. Maybe that'll be different on the new patch. Um, but the build-up play, they're supposed to be linked to this, really. So build-up play, slow build-up possession. Fast build-up, forward runs. Long ball, direct passing. Balance balance. They're supposed to be like, move one right and they go together. I've never really found they work that way. For me, the most part, I just use balanced. And for a lot of this year, I've used direct passing, but it might change that. Width, how much you want to stretch team. I don't think this one is massively noticeable compared to some of the others. But it's still pretty good. Players in box, literally just the higher you put it, the more aggressive your team seem to be in making runs. I never want it too low for the most part, but I also wouldn't want it too high and not have many men to defend or on the edge of the box to go back to. Corners, free kicks, one and one I have generally. I do up it a little bit for more aggressive tactics. 
For the formations, this is obviously a very key part. So like I said, in the balance, this is don't change your balance because this is literally what your team are using for the formation for chemistry. But for your actual game plan, make sure you change this and actually go change your team where you want them to be. Um, there's lots of good formations. My favourite for the most part this year is 4-4-2, the normal variation this year. Narrow is still good. 4-3-1-2. 4 3 2 one's got its use. 5-3-2 can be good. I like the 3-5-2. Um, you're always going to have formations like the 4 triple 2 Four two three one. There's lots of good formations on FIFA. I just think the four four two for me is the most balanced. Um, and yeah, it depends a little bit how you want to play, but I think four four two is very good overall. For the instructions, it does depend on what positions you actually are playing in your team. If you're playing a team and they've got wing backs, they're gonna have slightly different instructions to what. Um, or another a great example is defensive mids are going to have slightly different instructions that they can put on than centre mids. Left mids and right mids are different to left wingers, right wingers. Um, for strikers, you've got support runs. This is basically how central you want them to be, how far wide you go. I don't really ever see much point to make your strikers run wide. Maybe you could experiment with that, but I don't really see the logic in that. Balanced width, I think for me, is what I go with generally. If I'm playing all out attack though, and I've got lots of players out wide, like fullbacks overlapping, I want my strikes in the middle. We stay central. I don't ever use getting behind, except for when I'm all out press. Because when I'm all out press, I want to win the ball and just to make a run behind. But when they've got getting behind, the runs they make in general are pretty rubbish. Not the runs in behind, they're good. But the runs they make other than that are pretty crap. And it makes it very hard to do anything unless you get that one through ball in. Um, target man, never found much use to that. False nine, never found much use. You can mess around with it, but I've never found them that good. Interceptions, I never really change. It basically seems to just affect the stamina. I don't know if it actually does that much, though. Um, on normal tactics, I don't have come back on defence. It doesn't do too much, but it does bring it back slightly more, which is good for the all-out defence tactic. Basic defensive support or stay forward would be what I'd use in general. For your midfielders, You've got attacking support. I think it can matter quite a bit. Um, I would generally look for a balance. and It depends on the formation, the style of play you're doing, um, if it's your all-out attack, if it's your defensive, etc. Um, support and crosses. Don't think this one does that much, but mess around with it. Positional freedom, free roam, drift wide, stick to position. Don't really see which point in having a centre mid drift wide. Maybe in this formation it could work a bit better because you've got no wing width, so to speak, but yeah, I don't really mess around with that too much. I tend to put the outside centre mids if they're in a formation where there is outside centre mids and there's a mid other centre mid to cover them on cover wing. Cover wing says defend the open wing if teammate isn't marking. So it doesn't mean if you put a centre mid on cover wing, he's going to always be marking the wing. It's just a cover, which is quite a useful thing. Um, for centre backs, stay back, join the attack overlap, play a striker. I think you're just generally going to want to stay back. Defensive position. I like to step up at the start of the year. I found that really, really good at the start of the year. But as people started to get better at one twos, discovering the through balls in behind, step up didn't really work quite as well. And then for wing backs, I think it's pretty similar to the full back. The run types are quite nice. I only have mixed attack. I don't go to overlap unless I'm playing a more aggressive tactic. I pretty much always got to stay back. But in a more aggressive tactic, I could go balanced or join the attack. And then, um, yeah, I use stick to position again for that. And then for the keeper, in my ultra defensive, I don't have comes for crosses because I don't want him to commit to anything too much. But in my other tactics, I have comes for crosses, save out the box, side of the box, sweep a keeper. Find that's somewhat decent for dealing with through balls. And yeah, those are the um, instructions. The last thing really is the roles. I would just say set this up. You have to set this up in the balance bit. Just put your best players in there. Captain, don't think it really matters too much. Free kicks, pick your guy you want at free kicks. Penalties, obviously just pick someone with good penalties. Corners, pick someone with good passing. I don't know how much difference it makes or not. I've used some of the best passes in the game and they still hit corners that don't go where you aim. But don't put someone on corners who's good in the air, just in case you want to whip it in. Bale's not on my corners normally, it's just because I've swapped the team around a bit, it's put him there. But yeah, those are tactics on FIFA. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I need to quickly check that I've not changed something to my ultra defensive without noticing, actually. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Appreciate you all watching. Appreciate the support. And 
I hope this has been able to help you guys out. If you've got any questions about tactics, and if you want to know, please let me know. Ask in the comment section. Also, I do regular tactics videos with my actual tactics where I explain the process and so how they play in game. Appreciate you guys. Keep it spicy. See you in the next one.